All right, good morning to everybody. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It is Easter, right? I'll tell you what, you plan and you plan and you plan, and sometimes you wonder if you've got the right day. Hey, y'all, thank you so much for worshiping with us today on this Easter Sunday. Uh, my name is Nick Baker. I have the honor and pleasure of serving here at First United Methodist Church. Uh, if you are a regular attender or visitor, um, you're probably asking yourself already, why is he behind the pulpit? You know, I'm not a pulpit preacher. Uh, I don't like to be caged in. But one of the great things that we have at our disposal here at First UMC is that we are able to live stream our services, not just to Facebook and to YouTube, but also to our local television channel number six. Um, that was not operational for a while, but it is back up and running. Um, it's been going for about four or five weeks now. Uh, we've gotten some good feedback, but I did hear from a few folks that they have a hard time hearing me. Uh, now that's rarely been an issue. Um, most people tell me you need to quiet down, not speak up, but they have said that I can hear you better on TV from the pulpit microphone. And so we're going to give that a try today. So those of you joining us on TV, please contact the church. I mean, don't call us now because no one's going to answer. But this week, call us and let us know. Was the sound better? Was it worse? Was it the same? Um, we'd love to know that feedback. Because of all days, if there was a day I wanted someone to hear what we have to say, today is the day. Because, friends, Easter is the day for us. It's more than just bunnies and baskets and bonnets and, and, and all of that stuff, right? This is the day where we celebrate the risen Christ. The tomb is empty. Some people are really surprised today to find that tomb empty, but we celebrate, and that's why we gather today. So I'm going to be behind the pulpit a little bit. So if, uh, if you like that, let me know that feedback as well. If you don't like that, you can let me know that too. Uh, we'll move from there. Um, a couple of things as we get started, we got these beautiful lilies up here at the front. Uh, many of these lilies here are in memory of some of the members that we have lost over the past year. Uh, their names are in our bulletin, uh, with the exception of one. Uh, Maxine Alleman passed away this past week. Uh, our bulletins were already printed, so we have a lily for here as well. Um, and so we remember uh, those that we've lost, our, our loved ones, longtime members of the church. Uh, we lift up their families and their friends as well as they uh, continue to learn what life looks like uh, with the new reality. We are taking um, a special offering today for Undy Sunday. Um, now for those guests and visitors, again, a special welcome to all of you, both here in the sanctuary and everyone joining us remotely. If you're not familiar with this Undy Sunday idea, um, in the past our church has invited folks to bring packages of new underwear or socks uh, for Micah's Closet, which is our uh, family store across the street. Um, well, the folks at Micah's Closet this year said, we appreciate all of the, the donations, but can we take a special offering so that we can go out and purchase the things that we need? Um, there are gaps here or gaps there. And the generosity of this church is incredible. Uh, the challenge is sometimes we wind up with 57 pairs of Hello Kitty socks. And, you know, some of the guys out there don't, don't want to wear those. Uh, so we took a special offering last Sunday. We're doing it again this Sunday. The basket is in our fellowship hall. Um, you'll see a table um, along the long wall. And if you'd like to share a, a gift, we would sure appreciate that. We also, over the season of Lent, um, have been collecting health and hygiene items for Haven House. Um, now, normally, those, uh, all those items are up here at the altar. And you're, if, again, if you're a regular uh, attender, remember, you're wondering, oh my gosh, what happened to all of them? there was too much to keep up here. You are incredibly generous. And so we've moved them out, and you probably saw it as you walked in, out into the four-year uh, area. Uh, thank you so very much for all that you have given to serve people in our community. Uh, we serve not so that we get um, a thank you or a pat on the back or an attaboy or an attagal there. We serve so that people will be cared for, period, dot. And you care for this community so deeply, and I thank you. So what I want to do for a moment here is uh, to spend time in praying a blessing over those items that we have out there. So if you would indulge me and join me in a, a spirit of prayer, I would sure appreciate it. Gracious and generous God, you have poured your blessings upon us time and time and time again, not just on this Easter Sunday, but every single day of our lives. 
the very least that we can do is turn around and extend that blessing to others. And uh, again, this church family has proven time and again that the generosity uh, just expands. Every year, it's greater and greater. Lord, we pray your blessing upon all these items that have been generously given so that they would serve people in our community. We, we give not so that we would be thanked. We give not so that we would be recognized. We give so that we may demonstrate the love of Christ to others. So not only do we pray your blessing upon the items, but your blessing upon those who will receive them, who will use them, and of course the blessing upon those who shared them so generously. And we lift up this prayer, and we do so in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, if you're hearing this this morning, you're like, oh, no, I've had six weeks to bring something. I totally meant to do it, and I forgot. Don't worry. Uh, we will not package up all that stuff and take it to uh, Haven House until later in the week. So if you would like to still give, um, please feel free to bring uh, those items to the church office by Wednesday of this week uh, so then we can deliver that to Haven House. Uh, a couple more quick announcements. Uh, after worship today, all are invited back to our fellowship hall uh, to enjoy some treats, some coffee, and some fellowship. Um, there's also a great uh, kind of a photo op set up there. Uh, so if you and your family like to get a picture, uh, would love it if you take a picture to post it to our Facebook page, Wayne First United Methodist Church, uh, so everyone can see all of your smiling, blessed faces. And if you happen to have some bunny ears, I feel like I saw someone wearing bunny ears somewhere, uh, feel free to wear those too. There, there they are. The Easter bunnies in the house. Uh, I never expected to see the Easter Bunny. You look different than I, than I thought you would look. Uh, but th th we have a great opportunity there, so please uh, get those pictures taken. Also, we have an Easter egg hunt after worship. I'm so excited, although I have been told by Kathy that I am uh, too old to participate, uh, which I think is uh, ageism. Um, I thought we were better than that, but I will let it go. Uh, but all of our kids are welcome to participate in this Easter egg hunt. Now, it was going to be outdoors. Um, we're going to bring it into the sanctuary this morning. So, kiddos, when you go up in there to get your treats, stay there for a while so the Easter Bunny and the Easter Bunny's uh, friends can hide some eggs in here. When it's time, we'll let you know. So don't worry, you're not going to miss out. But that will be after worship today as well. Uh, final thing I want to mention is that um, our youth, um, you know, we, we demonstrate great generosity as adults, and we wonder, do our kids even pay attention to what we're doing? Uh, the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, our youth has gathered over $44 by themselves to go toward Undie Sunday as well. And so we thank our youth who have shared that. We thank our teachers and volunteers who have encouraged that. Uh, one of the things that we really lean into here uh, in the church is service. And service takes many forms in many ways. So we thank you so much for that. Man, that's a lot to try to soak in. There's more information in your bulletin today. I encourage you to check that out as we worship. Um, but as we continue, uh, we take a moment to remember why it is that we even come in the first place. Right? I mean, why do we come to church on a Sunday, let alone an Easter Sunday? Um, I mean, it's not just to sing some great songs, which we're going to do today. It's not just so that we will pray, which we're going to do today. It's not just so that we can hear a, a message. We're going to get some of that in as well. Uh, it's not even just so that we can be in fellowship with one another. All of that is so important, and all of that is part of what we do. But we come at, at the end of the day so that we might grow, so that we might be developed, so that we might be changed. But not just changed for our own benefit, but so that we might go out and change and transform the world. And the mission that we have here at First United Methodist Church is what drives us in all that we do. And so our mission is up on the screen. It's also in your bulletin this morning. So in one voice, both here in the sanctuary and those who are with us remotely, let's share our mission today. We are learning, believing, sharing, and growing in Christ's love for the transformation of the world. It's for the transformation of the world that we do this. I mean, we feel the, the warm and fuzzies. We feel good, right? But we don't hang on to it ourselves. We go out into the world to make an incredible difference. Let's continue with our opening call to worship today. Um, the words will be up on the screen as well as your bulletin. I'll share the words that follow the letter L, and I invite you to share the words that follow the letter P. Loving, powerful God, joy floods over our souls on this day. Christ is risen. Fear is vanquished. Death is defeated. Open our hearts and our spirits to fully receive the joy which has been given for us. 
Let us celebrate the victory of Christ and the hope for the future. Amen. All right, friends, here's the thing now. We got a lot of music to sing today, and I know that it's 9 12 in the morning. You've had plenty of time to get that cup of coffee. You've had time to warm up your vocal cords, all right? This is the day. If there was ever a day to sing praises to God, this is it. So I invite you to stand and body your spirit. And as we sing today, let us sing with the power and the joy of Christ's people.
now I know y'all are warmed up because if you can hit that note, you're in good shape the rest of the day. Hey, let's take a moment to share the love of Christ with one another. Uh, let's wave back to the camera, make sure everyone at home knows that we're sharing it with them. But otherwise, fist bump, handshake, high five, hug, whatever feels right today. Okay, you may be seated. As we continue this morning, uh, we take a moment to consider our gifts, tithes, and offering. Uh, we are a very blessed congregation, uh, as we've talked about a bit already, uh, also a blessed community. And so we thank you so much for all that you have generously given, not just in time and in your talent, but also in your treasure. Uh, and this morning, there are a number of ways that we can share that. Uh, for those in the sanctuary, we have offering plates at the back uh, of each side of the sanctuary, so you may place your gift uh, as you leave today, or perhaps you did as you came in, that's all right. Uh, if you'd like to give through the mail, you may do that, or if you would like to give electronically, you can go to our website, waynefirstumc.org, um, click on the giving tab, and then follow the steps to give electronically or you can text the amount you would like to give to the number 84321. Uh, but regardless of what is given, regardless of how it is given, we thank you so much for all that you share because it's not something that we keep here in the building. Uh, it turns around and it goes out to serve the people uh, in our community. So as we consider our gifts this morning, I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer. Generous and gracious God, as we come today to celebrate the empty tomb, uh, we thank you so much for the continued blessings you pour into our lives. Um, we thank you as well for um, all that you have given us, and uh, we really take a moment to give back what was yours to begin with. We thank you for allowing us to be the stewards of your good resources, and we pray that you would accept our gifts today as we accept the incredible gift and sacrifice and the resurrection that Christ gives to each and every one of us. And it's in his name that we pray, amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we share our doxology today. may be seated. And uh, for our uh, kids who are prepared to sing, I invite you to come forward at this time. Trying to fill up all the empty 
Trying to numb the pain inside Thinking you'd never forgive me For all those Saturday nights But thank God for Sunday morning Thank God for 316 And the words in red that say you bled And gave your life for me Thank God for the choir singing And the voice saying come back home Saturday night looked like the end of the story But thank God for Sunday morning Now I know that you're no stranger to the broken hearts like mine it's what you do yeah somehow you bring dead things back to life and it might look like it's as over as a stone over a grave but i've seen you move i'm living proof you still roll stones away so thank god for sunday morning thank god for 316 and the words in red that say you fled and gave your life for me. Thank God for a choir singing and the voice saying come back home. Saturday night looked like the end of the story, but thank God for Sunday stained glass windows feels like freedom on my face really is a new beginning it really is amazing grace thank god for sunday mornings thank god for 316 and the words in red that say you bled and gave your life for me thank god for the choir singing and the voice saying, come back home. Saturday night looked like the end of the story. Saturday night looked like the end of the story. But thank God for Sunday morning. Thank God for Sunday morning. see now if we have any other kids who would like to come forward please feel free to do so we've, we've got room we might have to stretch a little bit back but yeah come come on forward All right. You know, standing in a room only in a church, can't go wrong with that. Oh my gosh, we got some kids even hidden back here. I can see you, I see you all. How y'all doing? Happy Easter. Oh, now my goodness. I know it's kind of early in the morning, but you can do better than that. I want you to say it like the Easter bunny is listening. Happy Easter. My goodness, that's good. Very good. Hey, I've got a question for y'all. Um, have you um, had the Easter Bunny come to your house yet this morning? Uh, yeah. Raise your hand if the Easter Bunny has been to your house yet. Some of you? Okay. Now, if the Easter Bunny hasn't come yet, maybe they'll come later on. Um, the Easter Bunny uh, uh, made a quick stop at my house this morning and then went off to do some other houses, and then the Easter Bunny's going to come back later. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but I'm pretty excited about it. Um, now, when for those of you who had the Easter Bunny come, um, were you surprised when you saw with the Easter Bunny left? Raise your hand if you were surprised. Okay, a couple of you. Uh, how many of you were not surprised to see what the Easter Bunny brought? Some of you. Okay, there's definitely a distinction with the age of who was surprised and who wasn't. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I am surprised every year when the Easter Bunny comes to my house because I just 
don't always know what he's going to bring. Now, there's usually some candy and, of course, some eggs. But one year, the Easter Bunny brought us a volleyball. That was pretty awesome. Volleyball. I know. <laughs> Amen to volleyball. One year, the Easter Bunny brought us a football. Okay, no, no enthusiasm about that. That's okay. I liked it. Um, but I was really surprised on those days. Now, have you ever been, like, super duper looper surprised like maybe it wasn't Easter maybe it was Christmas maybe it was a birthday maybe it was a Thursday were you ever like super duper surprised about something yep. yeah what you got Oakley Christmas you were super excited about Christmas and super surprised yeah yes Halloween you were super surprised at Halloween why because like somebody gave you a toothbrush instead of a Snickers bar or yeah <laughs> Just for the record, y'all, Halloween is like six months away. You got time. Do not put toothbrushes in, East, uh, in uh, Halloween baskets. Yep. Don't do Easter baskets either. Um, what have you been surprised about? A 3D printer. Oh, man, I'm coming to your house to hang out. Yay. How about you? Christmas, yeah? A guitar, oh man. I gotta find some new friends, you guys are it. Um, well, there have been times when I have been really surprised, like so surprised, like my head just blows, I'm so surprised. Now, there were some ladies on an Easter Sunday, the very first Easter Sunday, who got the biggest surprise of their life. They were going to a tomb to see Jesus. Oh, you can lower your hands. I know you already know the story, but they don't. So I have to tell, I'm, I'm going to pretend like I'm telling you the story, but it's really for them. But these ladies, they went to the tomb um, to see Jesus. Now, they, Jesus was, ha, ha, was, was dead. He had died three days before, but they were taking some lotion and some other materials to help prepare his body in the tomb. But when they got there, this, this tomb, which is like a kind of a cave with a big rock in front of it, you, some of you just sang this song, right? That big rock was moved, and they walked up into the tomb, and it was empty. Yep. yep. <laughs> Preach. I'll tell you what. My job's in jeopardy. Uh, they were so surprised because they saw Jesus go in there. Jesus is supposed to be there, but he wasn't. There you go. Jesus was alive. He had risen from the grave. And that is what we celebrate on Easter. Easter bunnies are awesome. Easter baskets, Easter bonnets, uh, all that cool stuff. Easter egg hunts. Those are so cool. But the reason why we celebrate at Easter, why we get so excited, is because Jesus is alive. And Je because Jesus is alive, that means you and 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 you. And you. Actually, everybody, take your finger and do this. Put it right here on your forehead. Jesus came for you. Jesus died for you, and Jesus rose from the grave for you. That's pretty awesome. So that's what we want to think about today on this Easter, not just during the rest of church, but all day long. So, you know, later on today, if you don't get as many Easter eggs in your basket or if somebody gets the last roll or the last brownie or something, don't get in a fight about it. Just remember... Jesus is here for us. So let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for Easter. I thank you for these kids. I thank you for the surprises that we experience in life. Um, this surprise on Easter Sunday is the biggest surprise that the world has ever seen. And I pray that we would celebrate it every single day, not just at Easter time. So let's take this message with us as we leave this place. We lift up this prayer. And we do so in the name of Jesus, who rose from the grave for us. Amen. All right. Now, before you get up, I have got this basket of treats. There is one for everybody, I promise. So don't push and shove, but why don't you go ahead and grab one, and you can head back to your seat. I learned a long time ago to just get out of the way. You ever watch those Shark Week shows where they're like throwing chum in the water? It's about the same.
The scripture reading today is from Luke 24, verses 1 through 6a. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found that the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men, clothes that gleamed like lightning, stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. This is the word of the God for the people of God. Thank you, Rusty. Well, friends, we have made it to Easter. Uh, For those of you who have been regular uh, attenders or, or watchers, you know that we have been spending time this Lenten season with a sermon series titled The In Crowd. Uh, And we began uh, with a fun little story, well, probably more fun for you than for me, uh, but I was reminiscing about how I was never part of the in crowd when I was in high school. Now, I know that came as a great shock um, to none of you, but, you know, (laughs) it's okay. It's okay. It's been 30 years. I've gotten over it, most of it. But, you know, it's, it's okay, because I look back, and I think most of us can think of an in-crowd, whether in school or maybe even as adults, there's a group, uh, and the in-crowd tends to consist of people who maybe are popular or uh, they're talented. Uh, again, when I was in high school, it was athletes or singers or people in theater. Um, in our modern day context, you know, the in-crowd might be the people who have the bigger bank accounts or the nicer cars or houses. Um, And at the time of Jesus, there was such a thing as an in-crowd as well. It was a group called the the, the Pharisees and the scribes. Uh, The Pharisees and the scribes, they were the experts in the law, uh, experts in Torah. Uh, They knew what to do, when to do it, how to do it, with whom to do it, uh, but also they knew with whom you ought not to do some of these things. And they became so restrictive that nobody really was able to be a part of this crowd, including a guy named Jesus. And Jesus didn't care. Jesus didn't care about being part of that in crowd. He had bigger plans in store. And that's what we did over these past six weeks is we looked at our our own kind of in crowd, focusing on different words that begin with the letters I, N. And so as a very brief recap, uh, we started off with this word invite. Jesus invited the disciples to be part of his ministry. He didn't force anybody. He would go up to them and say, follow me. And they would choose to do so. Now, Jesus didn't pick the people that the Pharisees and the scribes might have thought were the best choice. He didn't pick the influencers or the movers and the shakers of Jewish community. Jesus went out and chose people like you and me, hardworking folk who weren't perfect, But Jesus knew there was something about them that was special. And Jesus invites us, just as he invited the disciples, to be part of his ministry, to be part of his life. And we have an opportunity to say yes or no. But the invitation is always there. After that invitation was extended, Jesus invested in the disciples. He invested in them. Now, not financially, like we think of investments today, perhaps, but he invested his time. He invested his teaching. He invested his attention so that the disciples could learn and grow to do the work that they would need to do later. And Jesus invests in you and me as well. Every single day, Jesus is present to pour into our lives teaching and opportunities to grow and change. Now, the the disciples could observe Jesus every single day for the rest of their lives. That was all well and good. But Jesus knew that just watching wasn't going to cut it. They needed to get their hands dirty. They needed to be involved. And so Jesus got them involved, sending them out in groups of two to preach and to teach and to heal and to understand what it really means to be a disciple of Jesus. Jesus knew it wasn't going to be easy. He knew there would be times of rejection and difficulty, perhaps even a little fear for their life. And the disciples needed to experience that to know what would happen when the time came. 
Jesus was very intentional with what he did. There was never a wasted moment. I know we've got a lot of teachers who are with us here this morning and joining us remotely. You know, as teachers, we never want a, 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 a lost moment. Every opportunity is a chance to learn something. We don't have to have the big breakthroughs every single time, but we have opportunities to learn. And Jesus was so intentional. He placed the disciples in situations where they would be forced to really learn and grow. And we are the same. We are placed in situations every single day where some are wonderful, some are great, we get excited, others are just the absolute pits. But he is always there. Jesus went on to interrupt the status quo. Society and culture said, well, if you look this way or if you have this condition or if you um, are somehow less than perfect, we're going to push you off to the sides of society. You're going to be on the margins. You know what? If we don't have to see you, that's really good. Uh, don't really show your face unless you have to. Um, go. Just go. Well, Jesus interrupted that whole idea. He says, no, no, that's not how we're going to do this. He showed people what it means to, to love and to serve the least, the lost, and the left out, which, by the way, is each and every one of us at some point in our life, if not all three. Now, on Monday Thursday, we talked about how Jesus inverted life. He took life and turned it upside down. The people who are on those margins, the ones who are pushed to the side, those are the ones who are first in Jesus' book. And Jesus says, well, if you're going to be my follower, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to do this thing with me, you have to learn how to serve. If you're going to lead, you've got to serve. And Jesus demonstrated that by washing the disciples' feet, which was a horrible, filthy, nasty job, reserved typically for the lowest servant in any household. On Good Friday, we talked about the word instead. Jesus went to the cross instead of you and me. Jesus died for the sin of the world instead of us. That word instead means to be a, a substitute or an alternate. Because of his incredible love for us, Jesus stood in our place, died to sin and death so that we might live forevermore. And that brings us to today's final in word invincible invincible jesus is invincible and if something is invincible it is too powerful to be defeated or over overcome now my father-in-law has a very nice chess set anybody play chess show of hands it's becoming a lost art maybe now those of you who play chess are you good so so i see some people going like this some people saying yes okay um i'm okay I'm not going to lie. I can hold my own. Uh, my father-in-law has played chess with everybody in the family. He has this beautiful stained board. He's played with uh, my wife, my mother-in-law. He's played with my niece and nephew. He's played with my daughter. Uh, in fact, the only person that I think he has not played with is me. Now, it's not because he hasn't offered, and it's not because I don't like my father-in-law. I love my father-in-law. He's, he's a great man. The thing is, and I have a confession. It's Sunday. It's Easter of all things. I should probably make this confession. I know deep down that the whole point of games is to have fun, right? It's what we teach our kids. The number one thing is to have fun. But y'all, I'd like to win. Um, and I know that I can't win every time. I know that I'm going to lose once in a while. And I don't, you know, kick and scream when I lose. I don't call names. I don't, I don't make a scene, right? But I, I just know that if I play him, I'm going to lose. And I just, I just don't know if I can handle that. Now, there's another person who really likes to play games and who really likes to win. And he's very good at the games that he plays. The problem is this guy cheats. For him to play an honest game is a bit of an oxymoron. If he starts a game, he wants to win. And when he plays, the stakes are typically very, very high. And believe it or not, you know who this person is. Well, I see some of you nudging the person sitting next to you. Okay, the per it's not the person that you came with, as far as I know. I mean, 
Some of you might be a hot mess uh, you know, on family game night. I, I don't know about that. But the person I'm talking about is someone named Satan. And as we conclude Holy Week with the celebration of Christ's resurrection, it's the conclusion of another game that started a week ago, a game of chess between Satan and God. I want you to picture this, a big ch uh, chess board. All the pieces are lined up. God is on one side. Satan is on the other. And they begin to play. As each player moves their pieces, strategy starts to unfold. If you play chess, uh, you know that strategy is a big part of that game. You start to think two or three or four moves ahead. You know, if I move my pawn here, they're probably going to move their bishop over here, but then I can take that with my knight, and then I can move this piece over here. So you're constantly thinking two or three or more steps ahead. So as God and Satan move their respective pieces, we start to see that some of those pieces are being taken by each player. Strategies by both of them seem to work at different times of the game, but at other times the plan seemingly has to be reworked. But even so, the players don't seem to be worried. It's almost as if they can anticipate the, the next move of their opponent. But finally... After playing for nearly a full week, Satan sees the opening that he's been waiting for. He can't believe that it's finally happening. God has allowed his most valuable piece to become vulnerable. The piece that Satan thought could uh, never be taken, the piece that was too important to sacrifice, was finally exposed. And I'm sure he sat back for a moment and thought that his eyes must have been deceiving him a little bit. Surely... He must have been thinking, God is getting sloppy. God is not the player that he once was. And so Satan moved his piece into position for the final blow. Checkmate. Satan saw that Christ had finally been captured. God had inexplicably allowed his only son to not only be arrested, but be foolish enough to stand a trial and not even defend himself. We read in scripture that Pontius Pilate said to Jesus, you know, I have the ability to set you free or send you to the cross. Will you just answer my questions? All you have to do is say the right thing and you're free. And Jesus was quiet. Satan's like, I don't understand how this could possibly be. The strategy that Satan had of working behind the scenes through different religious leaders, even one of Jesus' own disciples, had finally paid off. And God never saw it coming. As Jesus hung on the cross, gasping for breath, Satan was literally on the edge of his seat. And when Christ finally cried out the words, it is finished, when he lifted up his spirit, Satan jumped up and down with glee. I won, I won, I won. And I imagine he probably danced around the table a little bit, you know, danced around God, like, ha ha, you ever do that when you win a game? Kind of do a little dance? Who has, who has a victory dance? Be honest. Yeah, yeah. Y'all are in church now. All right, that's between you and Jesus. I know y'all have victory dances. Satan had the best victory dance. He was so excited. After countless years of trying, Satan had finally won. His strategy of using fear, anxiety, despair, darkness, hate, sin, death, it had finally brought victory. The precious Son of God had died. He was gone. God had lost. And so Satan left the game. Just left it. Left God sitting there staring at the chessboard alone. Satan cried out to the demons and the other cronies who worked for him and said, Spare no expense. We are having the party of the year. No, the party of the century. No, the party of a lifetime. He was excited. And friends, they parted. Now, as I look out here, I know many of you, and those who are joining us online, I know some of you as well, and I know you to be good, healthy, God-fearing Christian people. And I know that none of you have ever experienced what I'm about to describe, so learn from, from my, my mistakes. But you ever been to a party that started on a Friday, that stretched into a Saturday, and stretched into a Sunday? 
I know none of you have ever done that, so let me tell you about it. Um, it's rough. It wears you down, but it's a good one. And I can only imagine that after three days of partying, Satan kind of looked over his shoulder, a little bleary-eyed, and he sees God still sitting at the chessboard. And I had to, he had to be confused. I mean, Satan might have actually felt a little sorry for God. I mean, if he, if he had the ability to feel empathy. But not only was he confused, but maybe he was a little unnerved. So he walks over. Satan looks at the board and he sees that nothing is wrong, but then notices that God starts to move his hand toward the king. The king that Satan had put in checkmate three days before. But as his hand moves to the piece, God picks it up, and suddenly Satan sees it. He sees what God is doing. He sees now what he missed in his rush of excitement three days before. The king had another move, his own checkmate. And Satan never saw it coming. Christ is invincible. Christ cannot be defeated. No matter how hard Satan and the powers of the world may try. And y'all, they try hard. Amen? I mean, you don't have to raise your hand on this one, but anybody having a rough day? Rough week? A rough year? A rough life? This is how Easter goes. Satan partied for three days, sure and certain that he had defeated God and gained the upper hand that he so desperately wanted over the world. In this epic game of chess against God Almighty himself, Satan lowered the boom and offered a galaxy-crushing blow. But little did he know that the game wasn't over. The king had another move. And with this move, the world is turned completely upside down and Satan's strategy is defeated. Courage overcomes fear. Peace surpasses anxiety. Hope displaces despair. Light erases darkness. Love replaces hate. Grace forgives sin. And life resurrects death. Jesus is invincible. And because Jesus is invincible, so are we. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to instantly stop sinning once we walk out these doors today, okay? So I just I want you to have the reality. We are sinful creatures. We, we can't shed that piece of our life. But let me tell you this. Because Jesus goes to the cross, because he dies for you, you know, let's do this again. Everybody hold your finger up like this. Pointer finger, okay? Put it right here on your forehead. That is the person that Jesus died for. Okay, you put your hands down. That is the person that Jesus rose three days later for. Not because you're perfect, not because you've done everything exactly as you should, but quite frankly, because you haven't. Because we're imperfect. Yet because of the incredible love of Jesus, he goes to the cross and sacrifices himself for you and for me. And as a result, we are now part of of the best in crowd you can think of. We are invited, we are invested in, we get involved in an intentional manner, we help interrupt the status quo, we help invert reality. We know that Jesus goes instead of us so that we will be invincible. As we go from this place today, I want you to remember that. Life will be difficult, there will be challenges, you will wonder if it will ever end. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. Just, just, it's, I'm going to be real with you. But I'm telling you that because of the power of Christ, we are now invincible. Because the king always has another move. So let us pray. Lord God, we come to you this morning and we celebrate. We celebrate Easter. We celebrate the empty tomb. We celebrate the risen Christ. We celebrate the grace and the redemption and the salvation that comes simply because you love us. 
because of the work of Christ, we are now invincible for eternity. Life will be difficult. We will have challenges. Sin will still be in our way. But we now have hope that we will make it through and that we will be with you when it's all said and done. So, Lord God, we lift up this prayer. We lift up our joy, and we do so in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. at my feet It's okay if it's hard to believe I have faith you will do greater things It's my time to go But before I leave Go tell the world about me dead but now I live I've gotta go now for a little while but goodbye is not the end don't forget the things that I taught you I conquered death and I hold the key where I go, you will go to someday. But there's much to do here before you leave. So go tell the world about me. I was dead, but now I Friends, I invite you to stand once more as you're able as we share our final hymn this morning. And as we do, this is one that I know many of us know. I want us to sing this song knowing that we have victory in Christ. Christ is invincible. We have victory in him. So let's sing this like we really mean it. And I know you've got it in you. You've been saving it up all morning. Here's where we let it go.
that is for you. The victory is for you. Who's ever forehead you touched a few moments ago, that is who the victory is for. We celebrate that today. Now, one of the things I failed to note at the very beginning of our service is we have some information pads in each pew. If you haven't already had a chance to fill that out, man, I'd sure encourage you to do that before you leave today. Uh, if you're a guest or a visitor or would like to learn more about the church, be sure to add that as well. We'd love, love to get you plugged in and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, as a reminder, uh, after worship is done, everybody can go into the fellowship hall. We've got some great treats to, to share with one another, uh, some fellowship, some laughter. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the Easter Bunny and his, his friends are going to be hiding some eggs in here. So kiddos, we're going to shut the doors. Don't come in. We'll be sure to let you know when it's time. But until we have an opportunity to do this, to get, hey, let's do this again next week. What do you say? What are you all doing next Sunday? I tell you what, again, if you're a guest or a visitor, we have a lot of fun here. We'd love to have you be a part of it. I want to thank you so much for being with us, either here in the sanctuary or joining us remotely. But until we have a chance to see each other again, either in person or virtually, I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he bring you everlasting peace and victory. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we sing verse number one today of God be with you till we meet again. Until we meet again. Have a wonderful Easter. May your eggs be full and your tombs be empty. Have an awesome week and we'll see you all again next Sunday. Take care. Thank you.